You want the way of life? Here it is, the law. But you better not break a single one. If you fulfill all the law, you shall live. If you fulfill all the law. Look at the difference between two men in the New Testament. The rich young ruler said, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is the response of Jesus? Well, you know the law. Why didn't he say, why well, you need to believe in me? You need to be born again. Because of his question, there was pride in it. What must I do to inherit? He understands eternal life is an inheritance. And yet he thinks you can work these things. An inheritance is simply meant to be received. You don't earn an inheritance. You can't work for an inheritance. Either you are one of the, one of the heirs or you're not. If you are an heir, there's nothing to work for. There's nothing to work for. It's yours. But he said, what must I do? It speaks of the arrogance, the pride of the carnal nature that still thinks I can do something to inherit eternal life. So he said, well, you know the law. Thou shalt not, thou shalt not, thou shalt not. And this man had the audacity to say, I have kept them all since my youth. And the Lord with all love in his heart said, really? Okay, let's check. Sell all your things, give it to the poor and follow me. The Bible says he turned away. Couldn't even give one peso. Turned away. You know why? He broke the first commandment. You shall have no other gods before me. And he worshiped money. Couldn't give it away. And yet contrasting with Zacchaeus, who felt so unworthy to even be on the same ground as Jesus, he climbed up a tree. Well, of course, he was a short in stature. He climbed up a tree. But Jesus saw his faith and says, Zach, come down here. Today, I will eat with you. And immediately, what does he say? You know what, Lord? Praise God. You know what, Lord? I'm going to give half of all my wealth. And if anybody was accused unrighteously of stealing, I'll give back four times. See, he did not say, what else must I do to be saved? Jesus said, I want to eat with you. Immediately he received that. And what did he do? It made him generous. The law, that's why we have to keep on preaching. Oh, you need to tithe, you need to tithe, you need to tithe. You know what? That's the law. Grace changes you from inside. Grace makes you generous. You know why? Because now you want to honor God. You're not trying to get something from God through your tithes and offerings. You want to honor Him. And when you understand who God is, how can you be but generous? You can't help it. You realize with all that I am, and you still bless me, how can I not give you not just my wealth, my whole life? It's yours. Isn't God good? Amen. What an awesome God we have. This is the reason why our Father sent Jesus to the cross. To nail the law on it once and for all, rendering it obsolete, becoming a curse, Jesus, becoming a curse that we may enter back into the Abrahamic covenant of grace and unconditional promise, goodness, health, favor, and provision. Because the promise is not given because you earned it. Now that one statement up there is loaded. Let me show you how loaded it is. It says, the Father sent Jesus to the cross to nail the law on it. Here's a verse for you, Colossians 2, 13 and 14. And you being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you all trespasses, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements, that's the law, that was against us. See, the law is against you, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it, what, the law, out of the way, having nailed it 
to the cross. Don't try and resurrect the law. It was nailed on the cross so that the law will have no more power over you. Because the law is the strength of sin. And when the law is nailed to the cross, guess what? Sin has no more power over you. Because of the law. It was nailed to the cross. Now watch this. I also said once and for all. It was nailed to the cross once and for all. Here's a verse for you. He does not need daily, Jesus, as those high priests, to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's. For he died once for all when he offered up himself. There is no more sacrifice for sin. It is finished. The law has been crucified on the cross through his flesh. It is finished. So what happened to the law? It says here, rendering it obsolete. So we have this first. In that he says, a new covenant just made the first, the first covenant of law, obsolete. Now what is becoming obsolete and growing old is ready to vanish away. Not for us anymore. Becoming a curse. He took on the curse. Why? Because the law brings a curse. The law brings a curse. Look at this. In Galatians 3.13 it says, Christ has redeemed us. Everyone say redeemed. redeemed. That's past tense. It's finished. He has redeemed us from the curse of the law. See, the law brings a curse. The law is good, by the way. Please, let's get that clear. The law is good. But because the law does not empower us to obey, the law does not make us righteous, our disobedience, which is all we can do, brings a curse. So he has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, for it is written, curse is anyone who hangs on a tree. So